Hey guys, it is Monday, February 22nd, and I have 21 eBay orders to ship out. Let's get to work. First few things I went ahead and pulled from my storage unit. This is a set of Ping I-10 irons. Got these from my guy Mike. I think it's been maybe a month ago. And it was part of a bulk deal I made with him. So I've maybe got, I don't know, $60, $70 into them, something like that. I had these listed for $200 plus shipping. And I sent out an offer for $150 plus shipping. And somebody accepted. Next is a World Baseball Classic shirt. You guys just saw me pick up last week. I paid $6 for it. I thought about keeping it myself. But it was just a little bit too small. And a viewer named RJ reached out wanting it. So I sold it to RJ for $20 free shipping. So thank you for that, RJ. Next is an ugly Christmas sweater i've had this thing i think for like two years this was just a bad buy um i don't know if ugly christmas sweater parties are still a thing but i got this at a church sale for a dollar you guys will see a picture of it on the screen I had it listed for like 20 or so for their best offer for literally years and <laughs> it just sat there and randomly in february somebody sent me an offer for five dollars plus shipping so i just went ahead and took it to be done with it Next is a Breakfast Club t-shirt. Originally thought it was vintage, but it's not vintage. It's just retro. Uh, viewer name Angela bought that for her niece. So thank you, Angela. Hope your niece likes that. That sold for $14.99 plus shipping. And last thing is an Ultimate Kakuro game. Electronic handheld game. I probably mispronounced that. Some kind of Sudoku. It looks like makers of Sudoku. I got this at a garage sale last year for a dollar, and it sold for $14.99 free shipping to a viewer named Brian. Brian's username caught my eye. It's Boris and Natasha Whelan and Dylan, and I instantly remember that from the Rocky and Bullwinkle cartoon. So I wanted to read a message he sent to. Long time watcher, first time purchaser. I absolutely love your channel and how you go about your business. It's truly inspiring and what helped lead me to where we are today. Restarted eBay store in early December after a 15 year hiatus and started our YouTube channel mid December. 2020. If you have time to check out our channel out and provide any feedback, it sure would be appreciated. Thanks again. Peace and love. Brian, thank you so much for the support. I'll be happy to check out your YouTube channel. Okay, next thing we're shipping out is a Topps baseball set. Let's see, it's supposed to be on the C4 shelf. Here it is right in front of me. This one sold for $19.99 plus shipping. And the next sale is a big one. This is a big collection of great books that I got a couple weeks ago. There's a total of 60 books so I'm definitely going to have to put these in two boxes, maybe three boxes. These sold for $450 free shipping, and it'll probably cost me between $75 and $100 to ship them, even though they're going media mail. When I pack these, I don't want the, bo the books to just be, you know, loose in the box. So what I'm probably going to do is put four or five books in one of these poly bags and seal it up and then just do the same, you know, like have each bag with a handful of books then put them in the box that way they'll have a little bit of extra protection and then i'll put some extra packing paper in there too if you guys don't have poly bags i highly recommend getting some i use them all the time these are 19 by 24 but i have some smaller sizes too so if you guys want to take a look at these i'll put a link down below in the description i want to go ahead and show you guys something because you might not have done this before uh, i'm zoomed in because i don't want to show the buyer's name and username and all that but this is the order for these books since it's two boxes it's too much weight for one box i already printed one label and what you want to do in this scenario is you just click this right here and you hit print another label and that's going to bring up the screen to uh, buy additional postage and print another label so you just put in the dimensions and weight and all that for your second box and print a second label and that's how you do it all right i just want to say one more thing about those books and then i will move on anytime you are selling something where you have to have multiple packages to ship it like this instance make sure you message the buyer and give them a heads up that there's going to be more than one package because if he opened if my buyer opened one of these and saw like only half the books were in there i think he'd be pretty upset you know in case one of them showed up before the other one so i'm gonna make sure i'm gonna message him and let him know what to expect just to give him a heads up all right moving on from the books next thing we are shipping out is on this rack yeah this is it this is a radio shack scanner i think it's like a weather alert thing too i've done well selling these just a variety of brands anytime i can find these you know five dollars or less i always pick them up this was part of that bulk deal i have a couple weeks ago where i bought a carload of stuff drove up to wapakoneta for it so i've got about five to ten dollars in this it sold for 34.99 plus shipping next is a couple of starting lineup figures right up here they're both dallas cowboys let's see one is Tony Dorsett and Emmett Smith. 
and the other is Troy Aikman and Roger Staubach. I bought these from the Tennessee Picker. There was a couple big boxes of uh, starting lineup figures I got from him. And I had each of these listed for $12.99 plus shipping. And a viewer named Oscar reached out and wondered if I'd do a deal. I said, yeah, how about for both of them $20 plus shipping? And he said, okay. Oscar, I want to thank you for the support. Hope you like those figures. Next thing is a Cincinnati Reds polo shirt. It's an old inventory code that said D2. So my guess is that it's somewhere in here yep that's it red's polo this sold for 11.99 plus shipping next thing is a pair of new balance baseball cleats and i don't have an inventory code for them but i see i think these are them right here let's see these are them i got these from my guy mike probably two or three months ago they are brand new with the box they're metal cleats at the bottom and there's not every league will let kids use these so i knew it would kind of be a you know a tough sell i had them listed for like 50 or 60 dollars and i noticed i had two watchers and with baseball season coming up i thought i better get these sold before baseball season you know is underway because once it's started and it's in the middle of it i probably have to wait a whole another year to sell these things so i sent out an offer of 40 dollars plus shipping to a watcher and they accepted. All right, let's take a break from packing orders and answer some viewer questions. First is from Joe. Hey, John, I had a customer buy a set of DVDs from me and ask for expedited shipping since I had it as media mail. The customer had already paid for media mail shipping and I didn't know how to request additional money since I'm now on managed payments. What can I do next time to invoice the customer? Thanks for all you do for the reseller community. So this one's tricky. For this one specifically, what you could have done is if their email address was anywhere in the order details, you could have emailed them like invoice through PayPal, but but that's probably not the case since it's eBay managed payments now. So I think the only way to have done it this time is to have canceled the order and, you know, message him saying like, hey, I'm going to have to cancel this and put the, the buyer requested to cancel. Relist it with the uh, priority mail as an option. So I think that's the only way to do it. Uh, in the future, when somebody wants to do that, hopefully they message you before they buy it. eBay should let them do a buy it now without paying. That's an option that you select as a seller. Like if you want to make, you know, required immediate payment. So you could deselect the required immediate payment for them and then add the priority mail as an option. Then they could buy it and select the priority mail. So yeah, it's a little tricky like that, but there's just no easy way around it, unfortunately. Okay, next is from VinylHound83. Love your channel, fellow Ohioan. Where do you find your oddly shaped boxes at a fair price? Take care and good luck this spring and summer sale season. That is a really good question. So I try to not buy a lot of boxes. I'm just, I don't know, I'm just cheap like that, I guess. So there's a handful of boxes that I buy, like the small ones, like six by four by four, eight by six by four. Those are usually hard to find um, in like cardboard dumpsters because that's what I do. I go to the cardboard dumpsters and I get boxes. They're always clean boxes. I never get boxes that are in any kind of normal dumpsters. It's just cardboard in there. So there's, you know, I really don't see anything wrong with doing that, recycling it, and I've never had any issues with it. So there's a, a strip mall of stores that I like to go to that has like a Barnes and Noble and like a Bath and Body Works. And those two always seem to be like just chock full of boxes. So if you don't mind pulling boxes out of a dumpster, I have recommend doing that i get so many boxes that way i sell a good amount of golf clubs too and if you're selling longer clubs like a driver or irons you got to have like a legitimate golf box the long you know mailing tubes from the usps won't work so there's a golf shop that throws out a bunch of boxes that i get for that so definitely check out some smaller places you don't want to hit any kind of big box stores because they have bailers for their cardboard so you're not going to get any boxes from them you know like the walmarts and targets of the world you want to find the smaller shops and and they'll have the dumpsters, you know, right behind. So you just pull around to the back of the building and they're usually marked green or, you know, some kind of recycling cardboard only. And you can find some good boxes that way. If you guys have a question for me, leave a comment below and I'll do my best to answer it in a future video. Next is a Cincinnati Reds watch. Once again, it's an old inventory code. It said A4. So it is probably one of these. I think this might be it right here. Yep, this is it. I only got a dollar into this. I got it at a garage sale last year. Had it listed for $20 free shipping. Took an offer of $15 free shipping. And it's going to have your name, Art. Art, thank you so much for the business. Hope you like the watch. All right, next thing are some antique German art advertising magazines right here. So let's move this stuff out of the way. There are six of them here. I actually got a total of like nine or ten of these in an online auction maybe a month or two ago, and I'm only into each one for a dollar. The other three or four I've already sold for about $20 to $25 each. 
And then these six right here, I had somebody reach out that wanted all six, so we did $60 plus shipping. And a viewer named Jonathan got those magazines. Jonathan, thank you so much for the support. I really appreciate it. Next thing we're pulling are some Carhartt work jeans right down here in C52. Let's see, not that, that's a vest. These right here. Also got these from my guy Mike as part of that bulk deal, so I've only got three or four dollars into them. Those sold for $14.99 plus shipping. And if you were named Brandon, got those jeans. Thanks for the support, Brandon. Next thing is a NASCAR die cast. This one right here, yeah, Rusty Wallace. It's Miller Lite and Harley Davidson. I've only got a dollar or two into that. It sold for $14.99 plus shipping. Next thing is an offer I sent out. Let's see, should be down here. Once again, it's an old inventory code. I didn't realize I had more gloves down here. This is a baseball training tool. It's called Pivot Pro. I got this at a garage sale last year for a dollar. Still had all the original stuff. It's used, but it doesn't look like it got much use. I had this listed for like 25 or 30 uh, free shipping. And I sent out an offer of $20 free shipping and the washer accepted. This weighs over a pound, but I will just put it in a padded flat rate. I'll probably go ahead and put some bubble wrap around it too just to protect the box a little bit and then put it in here so it'll only cost like right under eight dollars to ship next thing's an e42 these coins right here these are kobe bryant coins i picked up maybe two or three weeks ago i've only got a couple dollars into them i did an auction with these and the winning bidder didn't pay so i sent out a second chance offer of 2580 plus shipping and the bidder accepted if your name mike got those coins he says hey john just saw i had a second chance offer from you thankfully i saw it before time ran out enjoy your videos and all the advice and knowledge you share ks picker 85 mike thank you so much for the support hope you like those coins next thing is a funko pop Let's see, it is Rock Steady from Ninja Turtles. I'm getting pretty low on my Funko Pops. I've only got maybe five or six left in here, and I got a couple on another shelf. This is the one that sold. I had this listed for maybe 120. I sent out a best offer of, I want to say like 105 or 110, and the watcher uh, countered with an offer of $100 plus shipping, and I accepted. And it's going on to your name, Eric. A lot of viewer sales this weekend. Eric, thank you so much for the support. I hope you like the Funko Pop. Okay, next is something I just got last, or I'm sorry, two weeks ago, as part of that big buy in Wapakoneta that I showed you guys. This is a vintage Lady Naroko trimmer, the case and everything. See if I can get that open there for you. That didn't break. That's just the sound that hinge makes when it opens up. Really cool piece. Somebody might just be using it for decoration or, you know, a prop or something like that. That sold for $19.99 plus shipping. Next is a Jack in the Box Sesame Street. It's actually Big Bird in the box instead of Jack. Pretty cool vintage play school toy. I only have a couple dollars into that. That sold for $17.99 plus shipping. Next is in B31. Right here is a Polaroid camera. I've been selling a lot of these lately. I always sell these untested because I don't have a way to test them, unfortunately. But it did sell for $14.99 plus shipping. And I want to give you guys a heads up. I get these boxes from my post office. Um, you can get them on USPS.com or your local post office might have them. They are, I want to say 7x7x7. Seven by seven by seven. Okay, a 7x7x6. Uh, seven by seven by and... I always ship my Polaroids in these because you can put some bubble wrap around them. It's almost the perfect size of box. So if you guys ship Polaroids, pick up these boxes. They come in handy. The camera's going on to a viewer named Ben. He says, love watching your amazing videos, John. Thanks for all of your positivity and knowledge from a fellow Ohioan to another. All the best. Ben, thanks for your kind words and thanks for your support. All right, guys, before I end this video, I've got some viewer mail that I want to open. First is from String Bean Cards in Lakewood, Ohio. Hey John, I started reselling on eBay thanks to your videos. I'm actually a UC student, so it's really cool to see the vintage stuff you find. Hey, I went to UC too. I sell lots of cards now, so here is one string bean cards on eBay. Look at that. Frank Robinson. It's a, uh, I think it's a reprint from the newest Top Series 1, am I right? That is a really cool card. Thank you so much, man. I really appreciate that. Okay, next is from the CEO Exchange from New Jersey. John, love your videos and all the content they provide. Thank you for all the reselling education. This gift can be added to Whitney's assortment because she is definitely a collector. <laughs> Rich, the CEO Exchange on eBay. We're just talking about a video that Whitney and I did recently where we bought that Funko Pop collection. And I mentioned that she's a Funko Pop collector and she didn't want to claim that she was. But everybody pretty much agreed that she is because she's got like... I don't know, a dozen of them or 15 or something. She's got a lot of them. 
Whoa! This is really cool. DC Comics Bombshells Rock Candy Wonder Woman. Oh my gosh. She is going to love this. Rich, thank you so much. Okay, next is from Roman from Cleveland, Ohio. I see a Reds hat. A couple of Reds hats. And a grill set. Look at these. A couple of kids' Reds hats with those shiny bills. I'm assuming for Sawyer and Darcy. That is really nice of you, Roman. And we got a grill set. I didn't see a note, unless I missed it. So I apologize, Roman, if there's a note that I'm missing. Oh, there it is, I just found it. Hello, John, I've been watching your channel for a while now, and I would like to thank you for great videos and content. You provide good information for resellers of all kinds. I've been reselling since 2004 and recently started my own YouTube channels. I know that you are a big Cincinnati Reds fan, so I'm including some gifts for you and your kids. There is a Reds grill set for you and your wife, and for your kids, there are two Cincinnati Reds youth hats, so hopefully you guys like it. I'm a big Cleveland Browns fan, so hopefully Browns will be in the Super Bowl next year. Check out my two YouTube channels, Roman Land Thrift and Resale and Hard Drive Data Rescue. My eBay stores and mega product variety. Sincerely, Roman. And there is the grilling set. That is really cool. Roman, thank you so much, man. That's really nice of you. All right, last but certainly not least is from Brian from Chicago. Oh, this is cool. Old Reds program. Hey, John, I'm a big fan of what you do. In fact, nine months ago, you inspired me to open up my own eBay store, Chi Town Flips 312. And I can't tell you enough how much I've enjoyed it. I love the thrill of the hunt. Recently, I found these two Cincinnati items and just knew I had to get them for you. I know you've probably done a video on stamped signatures, but I'm wondering how can you tell this is a real Pete Rose signature or stamped? Thanks again for all you do for our community. Your knowledge is greatly appreciated. Even though I'm sad I won't be at the reseller rally this year, I look forward to checking it out one year soon. Take care and stay warm. Brian from Chicago. So we've got a 1975 Reds NLCS program. That's when they won the World Series. One of the next year too actually. Yeah this is really cool. Looks like somebody filled out the scorecard too so just had some, had some added character there. That is awesome Brian. And then this is the bat he's talking about. Oh wow. So yeah this is a vintage Reds bat with what looks to be a genuine Pete Rose signature. So give you guys a look at this here in general when you're looking at signatures if it is perfectly uniform throughout meaning the ink doesn't have the lightest bit of smear and that the thickness of the signature is just perfect throughout it's likely a stamp um, but if it has like just a little bit of smearing somewhere or like it's a little bit thinner or thicker in certain spots then it's probably you know it's a good possibility that it's a real signature so this one you can tell has a little bit of smearing on it so I would venture to guess this is legit. I mean, I have to look at it a little bit closer, maybe take it to somebody that has, you know, is actually a professional with authenticating these things, but I would guess that this is a real signed Pete Rose bat. So, Brian, thank you so much, man. I really appreciate it. That's it for this video, guys. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.